Welcome to Kid Nation, one of the most insane reality TV shows ever made, where unaccompanied minors are driven to the middle of the desert to build a society from scratch, cook for themselves, clean for themselves, run their own economy, and drink bleach for themselves off camera. Yep, that actually happened. This show was so nuts, it leaves you wondering, is this the worst reality show ever made? Our host, the other property brother, tells us about Bonanza City, whose first inhabitants ran it into the ground, and it's up to small children to bring it back to life. So it begins, with 40 random kids on a bus ready to be physically and psychologically manipulated for the amusement of millions of people watching on network television. Uh-oh, this old kid has long hair and a hoodie. The show's already decided who the bully is. Stare straight ahead, stare straight ahead, stare despondently at a photo of you and your family while wearing transitions lenses. Damn it, the show's already decided who the target is too. This kid's screwed. City kids, country kids, rich, poor, and everything in between. The best way to successfully start a new society is to just immediately label every type of person. I'm not gonna be with my parents. There's no adults, and I think I'm gonna die out here because there's nothing. Uh-oh, this scared, exploited eight-year-old is already entertaining me. I'm terrible. Don't worry about it, here's some drone footage and dramatic music, let's do this. Plaid Dead introduces the kids to their town council, four kids who get to arrive by helicopter instead of school bus and spray sand all over the townspeople. So the kids have to lug their shit the rest of the way to Bonanza City, not sure why they didn't just take them straight there, and also corral the animals that coincidentally just escaped from this random farm. And if you weren't paying attention before, here's your second warning. Don't mess with Greg. Meanwhile, Stranger Danger pulls the kid oligarchy aside and shows them the gold star worth $20,000 that they get to give to the top kid every few days. $20,000. No. No. Yes, now that these kids are incentivized to gain power through real money, nothing can go wrong. Luckily, this eight-year-old gets it. He's like, why am I doing this? I'm eight, I'm trying to have fun. Good question for everyone. Good question for your parents when you get home too. So the town council immediately acts like they're hot and don't work. Almost like they were flown in on a helicopter and given a gold star worth 20K to give out to their favorite kid or something. I said, Mike, you're not working. And he said, no, I'm working really hard here. Can't you see? But all he's doing, he's standing next to the wagon. like, come on guys, come on, come on. And really, he's just, you know, like one of those guys at the airport that's sort of pointing you in the right direction as if we can't follow the road. Well, looks like this 14 year old gets it too. A lot of reality TV contestants are forced to live in less than desirable conditions, but only kids get to live in well, prison conditions. I personally think it's gross. Oh look, it's footage of the creators of this show playing with fire. Before they can sleep in their prison, they gotta learn how to cook. So they spend all night burning themselves with fire stoves and boiling water and eventually figure out how to make mac and cheese. And it's gross. I'm happy with what we've got. Taylor, the youngest town council member, misses being at home and having a healthy meal and a place to sleep, which is like, I don't know, reasonable. And Jared's not sure if he's gonna be at the big meeting tonight because, you know, this whole thing blows. I think I'm tired and I'm stressed. That we weren't prepared for the scale of what we're doing. Kinda sounds like witness testimony, to be honest. Another solid piece of evidence that this truly is the worst reality show ever made. To make matters worse, none of these idiots time travel to the future to hear my warnings not to mess with Greg, and Mike decides he needs to stand up to him to prove himself as a town council leader. So that ends in tears. Could have just noticed the long hair and the beanie, but it's your funeral, dude. The show made you the target after all. Silver lining? Now Alex is off the hook. Time to lounge in the sun and let those glasses do their magic. Finally, Michael, long hair no beanie, tells everyone to shut up and listen to the town council and do their jobs. So they all chant his name. At this point, the bar is pretty low. The town council reads the original Bonanza City Settlers Journal, which says they should split the town into four equal districts, which sounds a lot like segregation. Maybe they shouldn't take advice from people who lived in 1885, but I guess then it wouldn't be the worst reality show ever made. And it is. They split up the districts anyway, and then straight up lose Jimmy. He's crying in the corner somewhere, I guess because he's eight and stuck in the desert with a bunch of kids he's never met and cameras everywhere. Laurel bites off more than she can chew by telling Jimmy she's a viable substitute for his parents. Somehow, dividing the town into groups creates group loyalty, which leads to hostility in a matter of hours. Oh, and they also decide to reveal at this point that there's only one outhouse for all 40 kids. I hope that I don't have to take a poo, because I am not ever using that thing. Fun. This town needs some help, so large adult dad comes and explains that he's gonna make things more organized by creating hierarchical power through monetary incentive independence. This is really cool! Hey, let's all play a game to decide who gets what. It's like that old show Wild and Crazy Kids, but with an all-child dystopian hellscape as the stakes. So they decide who's rich and who's poor, and also unlock a reward for the town. They get to choose between seven more outhouses... Or a TV! 
I wonder what the choice would have been if they were properly outfitted with a reasonable amount of toilets for 40 kids from the get-go. I can't think of better proof of an abusive environment than a bunch of children cheering for outhouses instead of a TV. But somehow even semi-simulated child abuse won't get me to stop watching the worst reality show ever made. All this has Sophia thinking, I feel like a lot of sometimes I'm just surrounded by a whole lot of dumb people. Uh-oh, she might know too much already. Fast forward to the next morning, and Sophia is now fully woke. I'm a laborer now. This morning I got up at 6, I scrubbed toilets, I did laundry, and I hauled a big barrel of water, and I just got 10 cents and I can't afford a game of jacks. Wow, it did not take long for one of these kids to question capitalism. Maybe this is the best reality show ever made. Maybe I'm just the worst. Maybe we can both be the worst. They all have a town hall where they voice concerns about the town council and no one doing the dishes and Big Brother asks if anyone wants to go home, which is an irreversible decision, and they have to decide right now in front of everyone before it's revealed that they could win 20k if they stay. So, f*** that guy. Anyway, Jimmy decides to go home, because again, he's eight and this place objectively sucks. Run, Jimmy, run! Now that Jimmy can't get anything out of his terrible experience, adult man tells the kids who played ball all about the gold star, and the council gives it to Sophia. She gets the key to the only building in Bonanza City with a phone, and is allowed to talk to her parents once. This is her chance to tell them she just won 20 grand and is also being kidnapped and lightly tortured by a TV show. Sophia tells her mom she won 20 grand, which pulls our heartstrings enough to keep watching for the rest of the entire season because adults are easily manipulated too. Her mom doesn't seem to wonder if maybe the people in the town saw that Sophia knew too much and paid her off to avoid a revolution, but I do. Wake up, sheeple. Anyway, now that everyone is properly divided against each other in a social experiment driven by money manipulated by a giant media corporation for the amusement of assholes like me, everyone feels like they can work together and build a great society. Cheers! Don't worry, that was just the first episode. Every episode of this series drove me more insane than the last, and hopefully it will ruin your life too. That's what makes it the best worst reality show ever made. I love you and we're in this together. ASMR with Kelly Whispers. Hello, and welcome to ASMR. I'm going to be bringing you tingles, tingles, tingles for your little tiny ears. Hand sounds. This is one of my favorites. We sped up the natural cycle of life and death. We gave these two suckers a shortcut. This episode of Kid Nation is called To Kill or Not to Kill, which is a perfectly normal and not at all terrifying title for a reality show about a bunch of kids running their own society. We are on day five of this ridiculous experiment, and we now find out that Kid Nation is home to 18 beloved chickens. They all tend to the chickens and fight over who gets to touch warm eggs. Gross. That is so awesome. Emily tells us she lives on a farm with a bunch of Mustangs and loves animals. Sounds like this nine-year-old is this episode's perfect target for psychological torture. Let's traumatize some kids. Welcome to Kid Nation, one of the most insane reality TV shows ever made, where unaccompanied minors are driven to the middle of the desert to build a society from scratch, cook for themselves, clean for themselves, run their own economy, and drink bleach for themselves off camera. Yep, that actually happened. This show was so nuts, it leaves you wondering, is this the worst reality show ever made? The council reads the town journal, which of course tells them to kill all the chickens everyone loves because whoever made this show is a sociopath. So they discuss it with the town. All the other kids are busy eating terrible food with no meat, perfectly primed to take on the vegan versus meat eating dilemma that us adults handle all the time with no problems at all. Animals are friends. People just don't realize that. Then it comes up that if they want to do this, they don't really know how. And that's when we get our weekly reminder that Greg is not to be messed with. When he tells us he worked with a butcher and has butchered, like, every animal. I butchered cattle, I butchered pigs, I butchered goats, I butchered lambs, I butchered turkeys, I butchered chickens. Seriously, don't mess with this kid. So they put it to a vote and decide to kill the chickens. The animal lovers stage an impressive nonviolent protest and lock themselves inside the chicken coop. When I was five, I visited a farm and I stuck my fingers in the chicken coop because my mom asked me not to and a chicken bit my finger. It hurt. My point is, this is a suicide mission and I would never do it. They discuss it with the protesters and decide that since they've been given literally no other options for protein besides eggs, they'll kill the chickens. They don't address the fact that the show could have very easily provided those options instead of exploiting the problem they created themselves, forcing them to kill the animals they've grown to love in a highly dramatic series of events made to increase their TV ratings. But that's what makes this the worst reality show ever made. Anyway, they kill the chickens in front of everyone, cut them up, and cook them for the town. Hooray! Hang on a sec. I am just as bad as this show for watching it, and worse for telling you about it, so I might as well exploit this to the fullest all over again. Let's go back and watch this ridiculously dramatic sequence play out for real. We start with a warning. The following scene may be intense for young children. If I am a child watching this, I am psyched. They even bring in Tarantino to guest direct this scene.
Look, I gotta give them credit. They really go all out for this scene. The kids are scared. I'm scared watching. They hate that they're about to do this. I hate that they're about to do this. Maybe if we were all forced to watch the animals we eat get executed in the town square like this, we'd all go vegan together and save the planet. Then again, while some of them literally run away, some seem to handle the chicken execution pretty well. We sped up the natural cycle of life and death. We gave these two suckers a shortcut. Damn, Jared, that's cold. So they make chicken soup and everyone's happy. Until the next morning, when they're hit with the harsh cold reality that reality is cold. Like, they're in the desert, so it's cold in the morning. Everything's frozen. So they take boiling water to the well and unfreeze it. Then they assemble at the giant board of capitalism, where a FarmersOnly.com ad gives a shout out to the sun coming out, and they go bananas for it. Well guys, thankfully the sun is out and it's warming up. He tells them to get ready for their big challenge to determine their power structure for the week. That's when we discover that even when Jared says something normal, he finds a way to look badass. This is his Jeff Goldblum pose. I do not want to lose this upper class position. Jared rules. Hey kids, you know what else rules? Class warfare. The kids all suit up for their dystopian summer camp showdown. Youth Pastor John shows them the 45-foot water slide they've plopped into the middle of the desert. And don't worry guys, it's heated! Yeah! It's heated! Yay! My god, could you imagine having to ride that water slide with cold water? A nightmare. Anyway, if they finish the showdown within an hour, they get to choose between that going in the middle of town and some yet-to-be-determined alternative that probably corresponds to a basic living necessity they've been deprived of till now, because this is the worst reality show ever made. They all run a bunch of water pipes to see who can waste the most water during a climate emergency, and they don't get the reward. Turns out the other option would have been water pumps that don't freeze, so unfortunately we don't get to see the results of that Sophie's Choice. Taylor and her friends hang out instead of doing work, and Greg starts helping everyone out, cause just to review, the town council picks the best kid each week and gives them $20,000, and just to review, Greg's not here to make friends. Emily tries to hang out with her chicken friends again, and the chicken murderers kick her out. So she threatens to leave Bonanza. Do it! Run and get help! It's too late for the chickens! Save yourself! The town council can't decide whether to give the gold star to Greg, who does work just because he wants the gold star, or to Michael, who does work out of some naive optimism that they're not all trapped in the desert shirking child labor laws for my amusement, and now yours. Sorry. Michael ends up with the gold star and gets his one phone call to his lawyer. I mean parents. His mom says she's proud of him, but the best part is getting to talk to him on the phone. On one hand, that's very sweet, and on the other hand, why aren't these kids allowed to talk to their own parents? Is it because this is the worst reality show ever made? Yes. Yes, it is. Don't worry, that was just episode two. Every episode of this series drove me more insane than the last, and hopefully it will ruin your life too. That's what makes it the best worst reality show ever made. I love you and we're in this together. Relax. There's more Funny or Die TV next. Oh no, this episode of Kid Nation is called Deal With It, and I'm pretty sure they all die in an apocalyptic kidnado catastrophe. That's not something they'd put on TV, is it? Is it? Welcome to Kid Nation, one of the most insane reality TV shows ever made, where unaccompanied minors are driven to the middle of the desert to build a society from scratch, cook for themselves, clean for themselves, run their own economy, and drink bleach for themselves off camera. Yep, that actually happened. This show was so nuts, it leaves you wondering, is this the worst reality show ever made. In one of the most staged scenes in child reality competition TV history, the kids rage on soda at the saloon and wake up too hungover to work or play their arbitrary game that decides what class they're in. This is your good morning wake up call. But that's cool with me, because I get to watch the only thing better than Jared with something to say. Hungover Jared with something to say. Greg is cruel and non-feeling. I got four hours of sleep. Four. And to Jared's point, Greg is wreaking havoc all over town. The town council reads the journal from the fictional previous settlers of Bonanza, who, I don't know, disappeared, I guess. Let's just say they ran out of food and all ate each other. Anyway, the journal says they should institute a curfew and all eat each other. Okay, just the first part. But if they don't figure out how to fix this town, cannibalism is inevitable. The council confronts Greg about being an asshole, and he's a real asshole about it. I'm the village idiot, you're the village idiot, start. Yeah. You tell me right now, you tell me right now. What else? What else do you call him behind my back? The violence makes me feel very uneasy. Same, Alex. Same. So they impose a curfew. Then Colton takes some friends hiking and shows them how to scare wild bulls and chase them away while the camera crew does nothing to stop the near-death experience of three small children. Colton, back up, man. Colton, back up. 
Fulton, back up! Stop, man! Just a quick thought. This is the worst reality show ever made. The yellow team has a flower fight instead of cooking breakfast, and eventually makes one pan full of home fries for the whole town. This is breakfast right here. This sucks. Time to play a game to see whose responsibility it will be to make sure these kids get food and sanitary toilets. They round up a bunch of terrified sheep with human names printed on them and decide that responsibility will go to a different configuration of the kids themselves, as always. I'll take bets now on which episode will feature their first cholera breakout. God, I hope they never have to deal with a deadly pandemic that easily spreads in unsanitary environments. Any show that puts a bunch of innocent kids in a position like that would surely be the worst reality show ever made. Then again, that kind of thing never happens, right? <laughs> Anyway, they earn a reward for the town and choose between option one, a microwave. I've also thrown in a barrel of cocoa. If we had a microwave, it would take a lot easier to reheat something. Jared, on point as always. And option two. 40 hot pizza! With every topping, can imagine. So the town council argues about what a microwave does. What will we cook in the microwave? What? Hash brown. You can't cook hash brown. Yes, yes, you can, you can, you can cook anything, anything in the microwave. After it's fried. And they choose the microwave, so everyone hates them immediately. Damn, man. First these kids imposed a curfew, then they know thanks to Sky High Stack of Hot Pizza. Fake kid government sucks almost as much as real adult government. President Bush today, he has to be like, he's kind of bossy and like kind of mean sometimes. Because if you want to run a country like we're running this town, you have to be bossy to get people's attention. Don't worry, Taylor. Bush gets real nice later. He paints pretty pictures and gives Michelle Obama candy. Everything's forgiven. Hey, let's reset and get back on track by watching Jared carry too much water. Okay, not good. Not good. Nice. Next, a huge windstorm comes, which something tells me the creators of the show didn't exactly plan for when they thought it was a great idea to throw 40 kids on a random former Wild West set in New Mexico. But why plan for it when you can instead create the worst reality show ever made? You know, I'm glad that instead of burying this footage, they decided to do the honorable thing and stage a melodramatic adventure scene straight out of a disaster movie, except with kids and without any of the safeguards of a proper movie set. The bench is unbearable! No, 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 no. get back inside. Don't worry, they all survive and put the outhouses back up. Can't handle weather. Today I got too much dirt in my eye and I still haven't got it out. I don't like the weather here. I really like to go back and see all my friends and my family. Well, tough shit, Cody. You've got a job to do as a pawn on a reality TV show where CBS manipulates you and all your little friends for our amusement. What are you, nine? Come on. Oh, you are? Well, fuck me then, I guess. At the town hall meeting, everyone complains that the town council sucks and Taylor doesn't do any work. We earned upper class and I don't care if people are mad at us or not. Uh-oh, Taylor, be careful. You're gonna get canceled. Being upper class does not give you the right to be queen. Well, I can't say I'm a pageant queen, but the upper class is king and queen of the jobs and all, and they can do what they want. Oh no, Taylor, don't say that. Taylor, I'm getting a little bit tired with deal with it. Oh no, Taylor got canceled. Taylor cries and apologizes and cancel culture solves everything as always. The frat guy who smells like ham leads the town in their weekly confirmation that they are the willing participants in this televised mass kidnapping, and then moves on to what he says is the most important part of the show. The money. That they're waving in front of these kids as a carrot to do what they want them to do. Plus, the kids are all excited to find out who gets to talk to their family. Hmm, hey, maybe this is the worst reality show ever made? Anyway, Mallory wins it. Which frankly was the right decision, because Mallory's objectively awesome. I don't think that I'll ever forget this birthday because, I mean, I won the Golden Star, I'm gonna get to call home and talk to my parents. And, I mean, New Mexico! Damn, she should get another 20k just for that New Mexico tourism ad. She runs and calls her parents, who comment on how funny it is that the school bus drives right by their house every morning. Oh yeah, these kids are doing this instead of school. Cool. I guess. She returns to the saloon to cheers from the rest of the kid pioneers. They all celebrate the victory, and also that they didn't end up dying in that tornado. Cheers. Don't worry, that was just episode three. Every episode of this series drove me more insane than the last, and hopefully it'll ruin your life too. And that's what makes it the best worst reality show ever made. I love you and we're in this together.